welcome to the first preview show of the week here at Vitality Stadium. I'm joined by my colleague Neil Perrett as we look ahead to a busy seven days. Here's a look at what's coming up today. We'll be looking back at last weekend's game against Manchester City and then we'll be turning our attention to tomorrow's game against Forest Green Rovers. Well, we're going to start back at Sunday's game and Neil, it was a 3-1 defeat but there were plenty of positives to take, weren't there? Well, I think it was a very, very encouraging performance. I'm sure the manager will take a, a lot of heart. As he said in his press conference, we competed with City. Um, obviously, the game last season, at the end of last season, when we lost 1-0, we didn't have a shot. And obviously, there was a few people criticising the performance then. But as the manager pointed out, there was a, um, the, there was a lot of injuries that day and it was need, needs must effectively. But the performance on Sunday was, like I said, it'll take a great deal of heart from that, going into a, a tough game against uh, For well, Forest Green and then Leicester, of course, back in the Premier League. Uh, fantastic goal from Harry Wilson. Second goal. Um, it looks like a real, I say find, I mean, he's been found already by Liverpool, but, you know, a great signing for us. Lots of potential there. Obviously, on the downside, we've got to wait and see how Charlie Daniels is going to going to be because that was such a so sad to see him go down like that. He's had such a traumatic year. Obviously, lost his dad, had his knee injury on the other knee, which was one fortunate thing about it. But we will just have to wait and see how he how he comes through this. And we'll come on to that that Harry Harry Wilson free kick in a bit. But we really had a go, didn't we? We had a, a great chance for Adam Smith and Callum Wilson went through one on one. Even Dominic Slanky at the end. Yeah, I mean, if you know, on another day, if one of those goes in, all of a sudden it might, you know, you could go for two-two, and then all of a sudden we've got a first point off off Man City, the only team that we haven't got a point off in the Premier League. But you know, I think that um, you know, I think it will come. Okay, um, you know, th there's not many teams that are going to get points off Manchester City this season. You know, let, let's let's not forget that. And lots of teams are going to get beaten heavily, beaten by them because you know they're they're looking really, really good again. But you know, we, we almost went toe to toe with them, and that's probably the first time since we played them in the Premier League. So, like I say, building on the Aston Villa win, uh, an encouraging performance against Manchester City to take into the next Premier League game, and then also to take into tomorrow night against Forest Green. And it's worth mentioning Kyle Walker as well. He picked up a yellow card early on, and there was another tackle that, arguably, if he wasn't on a yellow, could well have been another one. So I've been thinking about this over the weekend, you know, and it, it goes back to when we used to play football at school, and the, the schoolmaster said, Guys, that very first tackle in the first couple of minutes, be as hard as you like and as dirty as you like because you're never going to get booked in the first few minutes. And that was a prime example of that. However, whatever he'd have done, he was never going to get booked. And we've all seen it back again and we know quite clearly it was a yellow card Then gets a second yellow card later and off he goes. Ten men, completely different game. And let's talk about that Harry Wilson free kick. It's absolutely spectacular and perfect timing just before, just before the break. It's, it's incredible. You we watched it so many times and it, it's just... He just stands there and he's so nonchalant and so cool and you're thinking, surely, surely, uh, you know, I know what's coming up and I'm thinking, surely you're not going to be able to just put it in that top corner, right in that little square in the corner where, you know, the, the, the really good free kick takers always find that corner and he just found it and, you know, it gave everybody a real lift on the stroke of half time and they carried that into the second half and they played really well in the first 20, 25 minutes of the second half and, like I said, uh, you know, on another day, a goal then different story and that free kick it was right in the top corner wasn't it it came off the bar and, and went in and that was the only place he could hit it wasn't it yeah exactly I mean to, to be to beat a goalkeeper of Edison's you know caliber um, there won't be many people doing that this season I can assure you um, certainly not in the Premier League maybe internationally it might be different but you know what a what a fantastic dead ball specialist that, that we've got there not that we didn't have one before him but you know, goalkeepers now are going to be on their on their guard when he steps up from 25, 30 yards with a free kick situation, no question. And for his confidence as well, you know, that's two goals in in two weeks. And as you say, not not a fine because Liverpool have already found him. But for us, he's a, he's a perfect fit, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, everybody, you know, he was well talked about. You know, there was a lot of speculation about where he was going to go here, here or there. Um, obviously, he thought that game time would be limited at Liverpool which is understandable because they're absolutely you know going to be flying again we, we've already seen that you know Liverpool and Man City are going to be the two teams to catch again I think and he's obviously had a good hard think about it and thought you know he's obviously seen other players come here from Premier League clubs get game time then go back and establish themselves and that's the path that he'll, he'll be looking to take. 
You mentioned Charlie Daniels earlier, absolutely heartbreaking when he went down. He was in obvious pain straight away and I think we, we all knew that it was something quite serious. Yeah, um, I, I, I sat down with Charlie last week and did a, a one-to-one interview with him in one of the executive boxes here and you know, he, he was very um, candid about the last 12 months. He obviously he lost his father to cancer in February and um, he, he had an injury where he uh, damaged his kneecap in training at the end of last season. Fortunately, like I said, it was the different knee. But, you know, talking to him last week, he was really buoyant and really upbeat and, you know, wanted to put a terrible 12 months behind him. And then the life of a footballer, there you are, you know, all of a sudden, no one really anywhere near him. He, he just fell awkwardly, landed awkwardly on that other knee. And, you know, it, it, like you said, it was heartbreaking to see him getting carried off. Obviously, fantastic for Manchester City fans to join the Bournemouth fans, you know, with um, clapping him as he was as he was stretched off. But I think we've all really, really got our fingers crossed for Charlie because, you know, if you know him, he's such a nice guy and he just does not deserve what he's had to, to put to to go through. Absolutely, and you know he's he's known the process, and he's been through that long process of of getting the one knee right, and now it looks like he he's got it all ahead of him. We're obviously waiting to hear what Eddie Howe has to say in his press conference as we speak, but it doesn't look too good, does it? Well, um, I don't I don't know yet. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I read read stories that he was rushed to hospital, this, that, and the other, but then all of a sudden we're saying that no, he's he was back at the back at the ground watching the second half. So let's wait and see. Let's not second guess. Um, you know, he's been through it before. There's other people in the treatment room who are going through long injuries as well. So, you know, if, if it's another long one, he's got people to, to inspire him and he's done it before. But fingers crossed it's not and it might just be, you know, days rather than weeks or months. And we'll see him back on the pitch very, very soon. Absolutely. Well, our attention now turns to tomorrow's game against Forest Green Rovers. Let's take a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in his pre-match press conference. We have no official update yet. I think he's seeing someone tomorrow for um, a scan uh, on the knee and a full um, analysis of um, what's happened. Until that time, I can't give you any update. We have done well in the competition in recent seasons and we've shown a really good attitude to these types of games, uh, which are incredibly difficult. And I think if if you don't mentally approach the game in the right way, they can be um, even more difficult. So the first challenge for us is to make sure that we're very professional in everything that we do and approach the game in the right way. Um, having seen them and watched them and analysed them, we know it's going to be a difficult game. Uh, compliments to Mark Cooper and the job that he's done there. And um, they're playing some really good football at the moment, so I know it's going to be a tough challenge. With such a quick turnaround between games, I mean, obviously we've got Leicester very, very quickly after. Um, I feel we will have to rotate our squad, um, give opportunities to some players who are desperate to show how good they are. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing them play. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking this morning in his pre-match press conference. Neil, it's the Carabao Cup and, and a competition in the last two years that, that we've not done badly in. Done very, very well. I mean, and th those Bournemouth supporters with longer memories will know that it was a competition, the League Cup as it is, uh, and the record before... Eddie Howe came back, if you like, was awful. We we hardly ever got past the first round and the, the even the second round when it used to be over two legs and stuff like that. Had some good games, but for years and years and years, never got never got into the third round. And then all of a sudden, two years on the trot to reach the quarterfinals is, is a magnificent achievement. Get drawn away at Chelsea both years, you know, beaten but not disgraced in both games. You know, it's very close. Um, so, you know, hopefully we can go two better this season and, you know, get in the final. And Forest Green, of course, they're, they're in League Two, but what do we know about them? Well, they're quite unique, aren't they? They're very unique. In fact, um, the, I think it's the world's first vegan football club. They've got, they've got an organic pitch. They've got a robotic mower to, to mow the pitch. They've got um, um, electric cars at the ground. They're owned by this guy who's, um, you know, well into the... He owns, um, like, a, an energy company. Um, I've, I've spoken to a couple of ex-players, uh, Jamie Day and Wade Elliott, who were at Bournemouth, who have experienced working for Forest Green Rovers on the coaching side in recent years. And I've done a small article in tomorrow's programme about that, their thoughts on you know, how the club is run and how different it is to work there. Um, but irrespective of everything that's going on off the pitch at Forest Green Rovers, you've just got to look at how they started this season. They've done very, very well, uh, beaten in the playoff semi-final by Tranmere, who went on to win promotion last season. They're a really progressive club. When you look back, I think it was about 1982, they were playing in the, the Hellenic League, which locally people would 
put on par with the Wessex League, which is like step six of the non-league level. So to come from um, that league in 1982 to be in League Two now, I think they've been in a couple of years, is, is, is a remarkable climb. And obviously they're in League Two now, but they're third in League Two as well. So they've started the season really strongly, haven't they? Very strongly. Yeah. They've, got, they've got some very, very good players. They've got an exceptionally good manager who... Um, I don't like to, to tell you this, but he actually masterminded an FA Cup shock against Bournemouth when he was manager of Tamworth in 2005. That was here. They were non-league then. I think it was Tamworth's first win over a league club since about 1969. So Mark Cooper, the manager, is bringing Forest Green back here. He'll certainly have fond memories of coming back here. So fingers crossed, the lightning won't strike twice. And for Eddie Howe, it's, it's an opportunity for him to give some other players a, a run out as well, isn't it? Well... That's what the manager's done every other year, so we, we, we remains to be seen. Let, let's, let, let's not second-guess his team, but I'm sure that there will be a number of changes, a number of players who you know, are desperate to, to show what they can do. Well, we know what they can do, but they'll be desperate to get on the pitch. And this will be a fantastic opportunity for them to, to showcase themselves in front of the manager. You know, ahead of Leicester, if he chooses to, you know, if he needs to make changes, if Charlie's not fit, there's going to be an opening somewhere along the lines. So who knows? But it's a fantastic, you know, fantastic game, and we're at home as well. And you know, it's going to be a packed stadium. So I think it all, all the, got all the makings of being a really good cup tie. You mentioned being at home. It's it's always nice to have a home draw in the cup, especially a midweek one for the players. You then have to go away to Leicester on the weekend. Yeah. Um, uh, it wasn't that long ago, if I remember, I'd driving up to somewhere like Morecambe or something like that for one of these. Morecambe, Preston as well. <laughs> it has been a few up there. And fortunately, it's a little bit more north-south now, which is very, very sensible, particularly for the early rounds. What's the point of sending a supporter all the way up to Morecambe for a, a League Cup second round time midweek? It was, it was ridiculous. So it's a lot better, but better for us, better for Forest Green. Now going to bring uh, you know a decent amount of fans because it's it's not too far from a lovely, lovely part of the country. A couple of hours at the most. So, like I said, you know it could could be a cracking cup tie. And for them, it's, it's an exciting tie as well. You know, when it was announced, reading through the comments on the Twitter, their fans were, were really looking forward to it. And, and it, it, as you say, it promises to be a really good tie. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's the David v Goliath situation, isn't it? You know, League Two, they're going really well in League Two. Coming to a Premier League club who are going well in the Premier League. You know, you know let's, it wasn't that long ago that we were locking horns with Forest Green on, on, you know, on a level playing field. I remember we played them in the FA Cup a few years back. Um, you know, so... They're going to, you know, they'll they'll certainly come and give it a good go. I mean, I know speaking to Wade Elliott about Mark Cooper's the way he likes to play, he certainly won't be coming here and parking the bus and sitting behind the ball. He'll certainly, you know, go for it. So that's why I think it has the makings of being an entertaining affair. And for Bournemouth, obviously, it, it's going to be a tough game. But if they if they can get through to the third round, then it's real another sense of positivity going into the weekend. It might just be a cup game, but you know, a win really does breed confidence, doesn't it? Well, it's, yeah, I mean, you want to you stay in every cup competition for as long as you can. You want to win a cup competition. I mean, you know, um, I'm trying to remember if we won a cup competition and, I, you know, racking my brains, I know we got into the auto windscreen shield final. We didn't win that. You know, we got into the quarter final of this for the past couple of years. You know, um, if the manager's going to make some changes, there's no reason why that team can't progress in this competition. We've proved it in the last two seasons. You know, even a, even a much changed Bournemouth team against a Forest Green team should have enough to beat them. But as we've seen in this competition, it's all about on the day. It's all about one-offs. There've been shocks already, so let's just make sure that we're not one of those. Absolutely. Well, it's going to be a very exciting game here at Vitality Stadium tomorrow. If you are coming, then we hope you enjoy your visit with us. But if you're not, make sure you keep an eye across all of our social media channels for the latest updates. Bye for now.